everybody and welcome back to another video by Sunland Tutorials. In today's video, we are going to be talking about something called the input-output ratios. Now, these concepts of input-output ratios are very important in production theory in general and they are also widely used in different trade models like uh, the Jones 1965 model, the Jones 1971 model and there are different extensions of these models which use the concept of input output issues. So it's a very important topic that needs to be discussed. Now let us first understand what the input output ratio is. So as you can see the input output ratio itself is consisting of three terms basically. It has one concept of input, one concept of output and the other concept of ratio. So how do we express input output ratio as? Now let us first understand the notation of these input output ratios. Suppose you have a commodity, uh, suppose you have an agricultural sector that produces agricultural goods. These are basically the farmlands that produce rice, wheat, sugar, all the agricultural commodities. So let me uh, denote the sector which produces agricultural goods as A. So that is the uh, sort of as the sector as well as the product that is being produced by that sector. So let me just write that down. Capital A denotes the agricultural sector. So it actually denotes the agricultural sector and it also denotes the agricultural goods. That is it is simultaneously denoting the sector itself and the goods that is being produced by that particular sector. Now that gives you the idea of output because these goods are essentially output right so you have the output idea now in order to produce a good you need an input you need something to put into the production process if you want to have some output so uh, what you can do is uh, if you feel uh, like it's difficult to consider capital A to be both the sector as well as goods what you can do is instead of taking capital A as the good as well you can take the goods to be x a right so usually we take capital x as outputs in production process sometimes we take y as outputs in production process but x is also widely taken it is sometimes used to refer uh, commodity bundles as well so let's suppose i consider the agricultural sector itself that is this sector this sector is a and the goods may be considered as x a now if I want to produce XA, suppose for simplification, suppose I am taking two inputs. So to produce uh, agricultural commodities XA, I need to produce, I need to use two inputs. So let me just write down, these are the inputs, right? The green colors are the inputs. So I already have the outputs and now I will be talking about the inputs that goes into the production process of producing XA. So what are the inputs? What are the inputs that you can think of? One input is the very basic land. So this is land. Let me just write that down. This is land. And then you can also have capital. So you can also have capital to produce agricultural goods. You can use tractors. You can use fertilizers. There are different technologies that are these days used in the agricultural sector to make uh, farming easier. So this is the capital. Let me just write cap for short. So you have land and you have capital. You can also take labor and capital as well. You can also take any other advanced form of uh, foreign direct investments. You can, there are a number of inputs that you can take. Suppose, or if you, uh, if you feel like land and capital are too uh, similar, because in some cases, sometimes uh, capital that is being used in the agricultural sector may be considered to be land. So you can also take land to be uh, L to be labor, right? The farmers that are doing all the work. So you can take this to be labor as well. Let's suppose I am for the time I am calling this labor and I am using lab, LAB for short for labor. So in order to produce XA, you want two inputs, labor and capital to produce a given amount of XA, right? So, suppose, uh, now let me just take another color, let me go back to purple, say. So, these, the red gives you the idea for output, 
and the green gives you the idea for input right so now we are going to be talking about the ratio where does the word ratio come from essentially think of it this way let me just use a unitary method so if say for example uh in order to produce x a amount so if i consider this to be the amount of output so if i consider x a to be the total amount of output suppose in a day the agricultural sector produces x a amount of output so this is the amount of output right and uh, say suppose uh, this is uh, consider that to be l a because we are considering the agricultural sector and a k a because if sometimes when we consider multiple sectors these subscript notations also help but you can skip it given that we are considering just a single sector here for simplification so suppose x a is the total amount of output for this particular uh, agricultural sector it is suppose the total amount produced in one day and suppose to produce x a you need l a amount of labor that that can be five labors that can be six labors that can be 500 labors as well so suppose in one day let's say this is if this is happening in one day so one day in the agricultural sector gives you x a amount of output and you are employing so this is the employment you are employing l a amount of labors in one day and you are also employing this is also sort of a employment this is capital employment so you are uh, employing k a amounts of uh, capital in one day and both of them combined together so l a amount of labor and k a amount of labor when put together gives you x a amount of output now where does does the ratio come from so let's think of it this way uh, consider a simple unitary method model so let's say you have l a or uh, let's say let's take it the other way around because it's an input output model right so to produce x a amount of good you need l a amount of labor right to produce x a amount of good you need l a amount of labor how much how much input will you be required if you produce one amount of labor one amount of output so if x a is the output if x a is the output just looking at the labor sector here the the labor factor here so if you want to produce x a amount in one day you produced x a amount right so if you want to produce x a amount you will need l a amount of labor if you want to produce x a amount of output you will need l a amount of labor if you want to produce one unit of output say 1 ton how much labor will you need you will need l a by x a right you will need l a by x a that is the factor input that you will need this thing this ratio it's a ratio right it's something by something so it's a ratio look at this ratio this ratio gives you two things this ratio gives you two things it gives you the input and it gives you the output so it's the essentially the input by output it's sort of like an input output ratio right this input output ratio is what we mentioned here these are usually called they are denoted by a l a what does this mean a l a this a stands for input output ratio and there are so many sectors and so many factors in the world how do i know what am i talking about so a is the input output ratio so here is how you read the uh, notation how you read the notation is input output ratio for labor in the agricultural sector so it's the input output ratio for labor that's the l for labor or you if you had considered to be land it would have been land since here i am considering labor it's input output ratio of labor in the agricultural sector so you always put the input first and then the output output is sort of like the sector here so if that's the input output ratio of labor in the agricultural sector so now how can i think of it how, how would i define it look at these look at these calculations that we made it's essentially if you think of it this way it's actually the amount of factor labor factor that i need to produce one amount of uh, x a one amount of agricultural good not x a x a sort of the amount so one amount of uh, agricultural goods so you can define the input output ratio as quantity so it's a quantity right it's a quantity of 
uh, labor input. So it's the quantity of the. Now there can be different sectors and they can be different factors as well, right? So here, since I am considering L A, so this part, let me consider L first. So it's the quantity of labor input. Since I am talking about L A, it's the quantity of labor input. It's the quantity of labor input used for. So what is be it being used for? What is the labor input being used for? It's being used for producing. It's a product. It's a factor, right? So it has to be used for production. What is it being used for? It's being used to produce one unit. Why is it being used to produce one unit? That's the simple unitary method that I take took into consideration here. So it's one unit. So it's producing one unit of what? What is it being produced? It's producing one unit of output. So it's an input-output ratio. So it's producing output of the agricultural sector. So it produces one unit of the output of the agricultural sector, right? So this is essentially the definition of A I A L A, right? Now you can extend it to A I J as well. Now what would A I J mean? This I would give you the input. So this labor input, this would become I. So that would be quantity of the I S input used for. And J would give you the sector that needs that particular factor. So, for A I J, the definition would have been quantity of the I Th input used for producing one unit of output of the J Th sector. But since I have here considered A L A, I defined it to be quantity of the labor input. Always remember that you need to put the factor first. So the factor comes first, and then the sector because it's an input-output ratio, right? It's not an output-input ratio. It's an input-output ratio. So it's the quantity of labor used for producing one unit of output in the agricultural sector that would be for A L A. Similarly, if you were supposed to draw something like uh, not draw, consider something like A K M. Suppose that would give you the quantity of if I denote K to be capital, so that would be the quantity of capital input used for producing one unit of if M were to denote manufacturing sector, then this would be M. So quantity of capital input used for producing one unit of output in the manufacturing sector that comes from the fact that I am using the subscript K and M, right? Again, the first is first letter always stands for the factor, and the second letter always stands for the sector that you are considering, the sector that is producing the output that you are considering. So this is basically the basic concept of input-output ratios and what they essentially uh, express. The, it's basically the notation. Now there are different implications of considering these ratios. This L A X A ratio. There are different implications when we talk about different sectors and different factors at the same time. So uh, we can discuss different uh, stuff called factor intensity reversal, and there are different.